Hey, everybody, this is Dee Williams, and you are listening to episode number three of the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. Let's get fired up. Welcome to Staffing Startup.tv, the podcast that gives you direct access to the world's leading recruitment, staffing, and startup experts. Dee Williams speaks with amazing thought leaders, venture capitalists, and technology trendsetters about their journey, challenges, and successes related to recruitment, staffing, and hiring. Now, here's your host, Dee Williams. Oh, yeah. We are on episode number three. Can you believe it? Three. That's one of my lucky numbers. Episode number three of the Staffing Startup TV podcast. That's so awesome. I hope you guys are fired up today because it is time to expand your mind, your thought process around your recruitment and staffing business, right? Super exciting. Okay, my name is Dee Williams, and I am your host today of the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. And we get fired up around recruitment and staffing. And one of the things that is super important when you're first starting uh, your niche recruitment and staffing business is understanding your clients at the fundamental level, right? And lucky for you, you have two types of clients, both bringing value to the business, but in different ways. So during this podcast, we're going to discuss who your core clients are and how you can best support them. Are you ready to get fired up? And now, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so before we get started, I need to let you know that this episode is sponsored by Identifies Consulting, who is your number one strategic play when it comes to hiring recruitment talent. If your business needs recruiters who don't just fill bodies, but are the true business partner for your business. I'm talking about somebody who understands the details of your business, who knows who your customers are, and who is in line and in sync with your strategy for the future. Identifies Consulting is who you want to call. All right. You can reach out at 866-432-8801 or visit identifiesconsulting.com. All right. Now, listen, today (laughs) I want to get this party started because I hope, and and listen, let me just say this. I hope you have your pen and paper out because I'm going to be providing you here with some really good value, things for you to think about as you are progressing in your niche recruitment and staffing business, okay? So now, first things first, when you are talking about your client base, right? I already defined that you're going to have two different types of clients. You're going to have your employer, right, client. That's that's one client that you service. And then you're going to have your applicant or your, your candidate as a form of a client. And they both have two totally different uh, needs, wants, desires, and and so forth. And you have to support them both equally, right? And and so it's one thing that you need to know right now. Like I need to put it right on the table and make it very clear for each and every one of you because I never want it to be a misunderstanding. Your clients, the employers, sometimes they become your candidates, all right? And your candidates that you place Sometimes they become your clients. So it's so important for you to understand this concept because when you are dealing with the employer client, you want to deal with them in a very strategic way. When you are dealing with your applicants and your candidates, you want to deal with them in a very strategic way. Okay. How you define and develop and and nurture the relationship with both your employer ca- uh, client and your applicant c- candidate client is going to make or break your business. Most recruitment and staffing companies don't understand this. We're going to talk about this more. You're listening to the Staffing Startup.tv podcast. For more info on today's show, be sure to check out the show notes at Staffing Startup.tv. Okay. So let's talk about the strategic approach to understanding your employer clients first, okay? So first things that I want you to understand and to know, they are watching you, okay? 
These employer clients are watching. They're watching your every move. They're watching how you operate throughout the process. And they are analyzing the the way that you're doing things from the perspective of, and let me just say, depending on the, the level of the hiring manager, uh, they're looking to see how you interact with them, how you interact with their candidates, right? The people or the applicants, the people that are coming to them, because you you never know one day you may be assisting them with finding an opportunity. But they're also looking at how you think things through. They're looking at the level of value that you actually bring to them, to the business and maybe their network in the near future. So how you communicate with them is super and, and how you perceive yourself how you how you deliver your solutions you know you want to be very strategic about doing that and the best way to do that leads into my my second uh thought process around this topic is you've got to do your research so many newbies lack that portion of the process. They just go out there and look for a company that has an open position and then they just, you know, that's it. Okay, I'm going to call in and I'm going to go and get the job. Not really knowing anything about the company, not understanding what the company is going through, not understanding really probably what products and services that the company even sells. If you ask them, what do they do? They probably wouldn't know, right? So, so many Many newbies just go out there and they lack the research. You've got to take the time to research, okay? You've got to research not just the company, but you also want to research the hiring manager that you want to do business with. Even if you're going through HR ultimately, if you understand what position is open or you're understanding what the company is trying to accomplish with filling this position, right? With filling the position, then it'll be easier for you to have great conversations, leave lasting impressions, and and to really um, allow yourself a strong foundation for growing your the client base of your niche recruitment and staffing business. I could talk about this topic like all day long, honestly, and I but I want to be respectful to your time and um and and just give you just little tidbits of information that I think is going to be super important and super valuable for you as you are launching your niche recruitment and staffing business. And for the people who already have a business that's established, a, a recruitment and staffing business that's established, you know, this is a great, you know, podcast to listen to to go back to the basics. Sometimes it's always good to go back to the basics and to start thinking about, okay, what is my process when I'm dealing with clients? How strategic am I really being? Am I looking at not just what opportunities they have open on the table today, but am I asking the right questions to figure out what they're going to need in the future so that I can find that as well? Have they launched something new? Have they created something new? Are they developing something? Are they uh, delivering a new initiative, a strategic initiative? What type of talent will they need to do that? And do I provide that talent? And maybe do I come outside of my niche a little bit to entertain some talent that I know that they're going to need based on what their strate strategic initiative is? I'm talking about being strategic in a way with your employers that allows you to really be a true value to the business, being a true business partner. And, and that's something that third party agencies I believe sometimes miss, which is why we kind of get this, this kind of nasty stigma around th using third party agencies. But if you guys are listening to this podcast and you're feeling this energy and you're feeling my passion and you're understanding that you have the ability to bring so much more value than you know, like, you know, people shouldn't be talking about an HR, let's replace the third party recruiter. They should be using them as a strategic play, but it's your job job to be able to show them that you are the strategic play, that you are the strategic play, that you're the way that they, that the money that they're spending with you is so worth it because you bring a value that they can't deliver or choose not to deliver at this moment in time. Be strategic about the relationships that you are making and that you are creating with your employer 
client. It is imperative to the success of your business. We'll be right back. Attention, all computer and information technology professionals. It is estimated that the business of placing contract technology workers is at least a billion dollar industry. And today, we want to show you how you can become a supplier of tech talent to companies all over the world. That's right. You can put your IT colleagues on contract and build them out. It's not rocket science and is a great additional income. Let Staffingpreneurs Academy show you how to start your very own IT niche recruitment, staffing, and consulting business. Learn more at staffingpreneursacademy.com slash IT. That's staffing, P-R-E-N-E-U-R-S, academy.com slash IT right now. All right. So now we've got to talk about the strategic approach to understanding your applicants and your candidates and your talent. I call them talent. Right. And and I think that most agencies in particular, I don't know if these are recruiters across the board, but definitely most agencies do not add enough value around the candidate, especially when you get to the commercial side of staffing, because it's more about volume or when you're at the place, I believe when you are such a large um, recruitment and staffing firm, you have so many job orders. It's so much volume that you really don't have an opportunity to hear the voice of your candidates or of the talent market out there. Not just hear the voice, but you, uh, you know, being able to understand you know, just, just the value. And and that's what I want. That's what it really is about. I want to talk about the value. So first of all, your people do business with people they like and know. Okay. And your candidates bring so much value. So when you're thinking about working with them from a strategic perspective, understand that not only do you have the ability to place these people into job opportunities. I mean, that's just the foundational piece of working with talent, right? But you also have the opportunity to receive referrals, right? So when you are build, when you build strong relationships with candidates and you're not so transactional, but you're more relationship focused, it gives you an opportunity to open more doors, right? I always tell my staffingpreneurs when I'm teaching them how to run their recruitment and staffing business, how to work in the business from a um, from a recruiting perspective. When you're dealing with your candidates, like the referral and you have the relationship, the referral pool opens. It's like the, the floodgate, the referral pool floodgate opens because they have a level of comfortability with you, but they believe that not only will you, um, are you great to them, but you will also assist the people that they know and the people that they work with and the people that they're related to and all those other things, right? The people they go to church with, the people they go to the sports events with, that, you know, their friends, their family. I'm just, I'm, I want you to start thinking strategically. Again, I want you to start thinking strategically about the value that you can provide to them based on the relationship that you build with them, which ultimately is the value that they bring to you, right? So another thing, okay? So they become your employer clients, right? So not only do you get an opportunity to hire them, right? And not only do they bring referrals, but over time, if you're not placing them into a management level role or or higher, over time, they're going to elevate in their career. They're going to grow in their career. And if you have the relationship with them as they're moving along throughout their career, they're, you're constantly in contact with them. That provides a level of opportunity for you, not just to fill your positions, quote unquote, with them, but again, extending that referral network, that referral pool that will ultimately help grow your business and your network over time. Okay. Also, I want you to think from a strategic perspective, all of these people that you are connecting with while you're being so transactional and I'm kind of being condescending, but you know, these people sit next to the people that you want to hire. 
They sit next to the the talent that you want to hire. They sit next to uh, that dynamic person that's not on the job boards and and that um, may not even have a LinkedIn profile because they're like geeked out about, you know, security or whatever. Right. So but they're amazing. They're they're awesome. And so, you know, you miss out on the opportunity to connect with those people as well. You know, when you have a transactional approach to your candidates. Now, does that mean, D, do I talk to everyone, whether or not they're a fit or not? No, don't be ridiculous. But when you do establish a connection with someone that you find a value that may be a fit for um, a position within your, your current niche or in another niche, like be strategic about how you deal with them. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. I'm saying just be strategic about how you connect with them, how you converse with them, how you entertain your relationship, the working relationship that you have with them. Okay. And then finally, the other thing that I want to say is candidates give intelligence. Okay. They give intelligence that the market does not have access to always. Think about all the surveys that go out. It's based on a specific candidate pool or it's based on a specific group of people. So many times they don't always know what's going on in the industry as a whole because they're not talking to everyone in the industry. It's, it's, it's a starting point, but you have the ability to generate analytics at a level that most companies have to work super hard for. It's right there at your fingertips. So candidates also provide intelligence to help you understand your, the business, your business, their business, and them better. Staffing Startup.TV is your number one source for news, information, and live interviews specific to the growth and success of niche recruiting and staffing agency business owners, Staffingpreneurs. So by now, I, I think that you guys understand that it is super imperative that when you are starting this business or if you're in a place of running this business and you're looking to scale it and take it to the next level, that every conversation that you have, every uh, every person that you connect with is a strategic move for you. And when you are dealing with them, you're planting some type of seed, whether it's a good seed or bad seed. You are the soil and you're planting that seed. So you've got to be very cognizant of the relationships that you're building, why you're building those relationships and how you can benefit them and they can benefit you, not just now, but in the future. Don't just love on your employer clients, understand them and don't just throw your candidates away by not continuing the relationship. And when I say continuing the relationship, that means calling them back. That means putting them on a rotation schedule, just as you would put your, your uh, uh, clients on a rotation schedule in the sales and business development space, right? You want to do the same thing with your candidates. A relationship doesn't blossom without communication. And that's on both ends of the spectrum. And I, I just, just, a larger perspective, you guys know that I'm always using recruitment and staffing uh, in relation to dating, right? So think about this. When your husband, and for the ladies, when your husband was pursuing you, right? If he would have never called you back, if, if he would have never texted you back, if he would have never asked you out on that date, would you guys be together today? No way. Right. Because a relationship only happens by constant communication, constant communication. This is something I'm going to drill in your heads over the lifetime of this podcast is being able to understand that your clients will not become clients. And I'm talking about the employers unless you have a constant a relationship with them. You have constant conversation with them over time and it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time to build real relationships and that's okay. And that your candidates, the relationships that you build with them will probably be more valuable than the relationships that you build with the employers at some point. Because again, your candidates become your clients and your clients become your candidates. Don't get me fired up. I'm not here to teach and train. I'm just here to open your minds. <laughs> I'm here to open your mindset and 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 to get you to think about your business differently, to really be in strategic thought around how you are delivering your niche recruitments and staffing services. 
You are the answer to what these companies need. Never doubt that. I don't care what anybody says. You never doubt that. You are the answer. But the question is truly, how much value do you truly bring? And how do you separate yourself? How do you create a value proposition for these employers? How do you create a value proposition for your applicants and your candidates that will allow your business to flourish and allow you to be able to support them in a way that they've never seen before? When you start asking yourself those questions, really pondering it. I mean, don't just blurt out the answer right now. That's not right. I want you to really sit down and think about it. Drink a cup of coffee or some tea. Talk to your friends, your family. Ask questions. Do your own data you know, analysis and your own research. When you start to figure out what your true value proposition is to both your clients, your employer clients, and your applicants, your candidates, and your talent, it'll be so much easier easier for you to really take your business to another level. All right. Well, I hope this was helpful for each and every one of you. You know, I get on this podcast because I really believe in the power of sharing. And so the next episode, it's going to be super awesome. You got to come back. We're going to have Bruce Tolgan on this episode. He's going to talk about the talent war, the millennial shift and building high performance teams. We're going to talk about his book. It's going to be awesome. So I want you to come back to the next podcast. I really appreciate you for being here. You're so phenomenal. Never forget that. And let me tell you, you are among the great. There are not many people who can say, I own a niche recruitment and staffing business, right? (laughs) Do your thing. I love you. My name is Dee Williams. I'm your host, and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the StaffingStartup.tv podcast. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you'd like more information on any of our stories or would like to know how to get involved and share your story, head over to our website at StaffingStartup.tv. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and please leave a five-star rating and a super awesome review so others can enjoy the show too. Check out the live video footage on YouTube. Have a great week and we'll see you next episode.